Hi, it's Danny Lewis here. I hope you're all doing good. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the remix that I've done for Pogo House Records of Tony Fuel featuring Andrea Brown. Let's rise. As you can see, this has been done in Logic Pro X. Higher power. And what I'm going to do Higher in the video power. is just take a look at the elements that are being used to construct the track. Also have a look at the arrangement and some of the decisions that I made there. Higher power. Higher power. Now the lyrics on this song are particularly apt given what's been going on in the world. Higher power. Raise us up. And I'm gonna get <laughs> I'm just gonna let this thing breathe for a while. I want you to hear this thing properly. We'll go into the first verse and then the first chorus, and then what I'll do is I'll backtrack and we'll take a look at the elements. Just on the intro here, this version that you're hearing now is mastered by me, but the finished result was mastered by Mike Milray. Okay, we'll stop it there. I mean, look, I think you'll agree that is just such an incredible vocal performance. And there's something that really resonates about the lyrics and just the way this thing was sung. Um, and the backing that I put together was really inspired by so much going on at the moment. And, um, you know, I think, you know, for me, I'm very happy with the results. It seems uh, getting some great feedback and um, some great support from DJs. So let's take this back a bit. So we'll take a look first of all at the beats and I'm going to solo the top track. For some reason, I have named that best. It was supposed to be beats. <laughs> you know how it is when you're composing, you do things quickly. But let's take a look. We'll expand on the mixer. And what we've got is a selection of individual one-shot sounds that I put together into a kit. The instrument being used for this is Logic's very own drum machine designer, which is here. And very simple programming. I'm just going to bring this up so we can see it. So nothing really special going on here. You can see that I'm using Logic's function for looping. It's just continuously taking the programming that I put in there and repeating that. So that's the, the main kind of backbeat. Now on top of that, there's a tambourine. This is an Apple loop, okay? So providing a nice bit of organic humanity on top of my programming. We've also got a crash symbol and a ride symbol. And these are audio. And what I, I'm trying to remember what I did here. I think I actually just rendered these out from another one of my tracks, which is kind of cheating. But sometimes when you're doing a remix, you want to just do things quickly. Okay. What else we got? Now this is another Apple loop. And one of the things that I've noticed myself doing in Logic, because the, the Apple Loops are of such a great quality, is just to drop in some of the Apple Loops just to provide extra texture. So you can see here that that's adding a, a, a very slight extra texture in fact. So you can hear that. Let me solo this. You hear that? So just layered subtly on top. So let's come back once again. Let's get these beat elements together. And there's a break beat. This is very subtly in the background. It's another Apple loop, okay? This time using the EQ to roll off the low frequencies. And let's just take a look at that in isolation. Let me take the EQ off. So tons of bottom end there that really didn't work in context with the other elements. So that's the beats. And um, let's take it back to the beginning. 
couple of extra things going on here, some wind chimes. Let me just expose this so you can see. Taken from another track of mine. <laughs> I was really doing things at speed here. So yeah, I bounced these wind chimes out and uh, they're available here for this song. Very quick and easy. But I think when, you, when it comes to a song, having the wind chimes is really nice to signify different sections of the, the verses and choruses and so on. Let's take a look at the bass. So once again, if you've been watching my videos, you will have seen me using this before. This is a reactor ensemble called, uh, I'm trying to remember now, there it is, Razor. And uh, the Barnaby preset is one that I use a lot. I usually make a few tweaks here to the filter and just to warm it up, which I think pretty much what I've done here. And so that in isolation, let's just put this on. Let's take a look at the programming here. Just make sure that I'm selecting this. There we go. You know, even though I've used audio loops for some of the drums and stuff, you know, you'll never find me using audio loops when it comes to the programming, the musical elements. I mean, particularly what I want to do is put some of my own vibe and um, feeling into those elements. And, um, you know, always the backbeat will be programmed by me, you know, the main beat that we saw at the top here. But it seems that in Logic, I'm using a few of these loops just for extra textures. Um, right, let's take a look. Let's get the bass, let's get the brass. We'll put these together. Very distinctive part of this remix is that brass. Just bubbling away in the background. Swung, you can see here. It's not literally on that 16th position. So this is a wicked progression here. Um, let me just show you the instrument that I used. It was the Cork Triton patch called MMG Brass. And um, this is also working with another sound. Same chords, funny enough. This is using the Cork M1, and this is the wine pad. I've used this a lot. It's a very simple sine wave patch, creating a nice warm bed in the background. This synth here, this resonant sweeping sound is called Super Sweeper in the Cork Triton. And I found that by literally typing the word sweep into the search engine. Love this organ. So this is the 80s pop organ coming from Native Instruments. Um, no, it's not. Okay, because <laughs> I've been using Contact a lot, right? And um, Contact has a great selection of organs, but this is actually Logic's own organ. And uh, look at that Leslie speaker cabinet emulation thing flying around that's like rotary going really fast. So that creates that really nice texture in the organ, um, very gospelly. And essentially what's happening here is, is in the song, this is it's almost like a bridge, okay? So it's transitioning, it's leading into a section which you class as the chorus. So I'll just show you that. So this is what I would class as the verse, and you can see that I've colored these things. Higher power. Higher power. And you can see also that I have labeled it bridge as well. This creates a nice kind of transition. It gives you a sense that something new is coming up. And in fact, in the composition itself, this is leading us into the vocals. And we do start with um, more of a kind of ad lib instead of a verse. I'll come back to the vocals. Let's take a look at this piano because um, this sounds great. And what I'm using here is a Logic piano. So this is the Steinway Grand Piano. Something really good about that one. And I think, let me just take a look. I think I did maximum velocity on here. Um, I think so. Um, I'm still getting used to um, Logic often not using it for a while. I'm trying to remember how on earth did I see the uh, velocity lane? Um, or are we MIDI display off? Are they, uh, have I really got to go back onto this? I do, yeah, there we go. Um, so, no, it's not fully. 
It's not 127, okay, but they're all uniform. So the reason why I did them all the same is because I wanted equal energy in terms of what's coming through on those sections because I tend to use this, um, you know, on this bridge section, which is really quite a dramatic part, and also on the chorus. So I'm just going to show you that piano on the chorus here. Let's bring the vocal. So <laughs> hearing that piano on the vocal on its own sounds amazing. Reminds me of the kind of time when um, back in the day, the Ministry of Sound in the main room, maybe about 1993 or so, you know, DJs would have these reprised versions of songs and they'd drop everything out and you'd just have literally a kind of gospel piano and vocal going on and it was just incredible. So um, that's really nice to be able to do that. So, um, yeah, piano, um, you've got there the resonant pad. You see there's not actually a lot of musical elements here, you know, um, Keep really keeping things simple. So on to high string. That's another element over here. Just to add some drama. There is another string patch. Um, so this one here you're hearing at the moment is contact string ensemble. And then this one here, string ensemble again. So really just to bring a little bit of extra musicality at the end that you haven't heard already. Such a strong chorus. I know that I've had it stuck in my head a lot. I'm hoping it's the same for everybody else. I'm just going to explain here. Um, you know, you've got here the same brass and bass, but this is looped over a shorter period, whereas these are running over, what is it? It's like a four bar section. Um, this is literally just repeated over and over again because it's the outro. So the DJ is going to be blending the next song in. So that's a contrast. Now, the other contrast that I wanted to talk about is in the middle. All right. So it's kind of like a middle eight. So the chorus here. Then we get this almost like a chorus part two. It's a hook. So she's now working to a section here where there's no vocal. So giving your ears a rest from the singing into a kind of musical interlude which then goes back into the vocal again, but stripped down. So let's have a listen to the interlude now. And I'm a big fan of vocals, but sometimes it is nice to pull back a bit and give um, the listeners a rest. So that really brings it back with that vocal. It gives everybody, um, the, yeah, it's kind of like, really bringing emphasis to the vocal by having that change in the middle. Let's look at the elements. So we had the pad going. We also had an op. And um, I didn't play this riff in, I just ran it through an arpeggiator. So you're hearing variations of my chord notes played through the op. And this is running on the patch on the Falcon instrument. And this is a key bell magic motion. And you can see here this kind of opt pattern and um, that was a quick fix for getting some kind of melodic aspect in there that's new also at the same time the organ now note that I start off introducing this organ by running my fingers down the keyboard really fast so that was literally taking you know a note I don't think I even yeah I did I think I did I planned the top, but the, the bottom one, it was just wherever my fingers ended up. And that actually creates this nice intro to the organ in that section. And similarly, there is something at the end here to reintroduce the vocal. It's 
sounds terrible in isolation, but <laughs> in the mix, it sounds good. So there we go. I mean, look, you can see what I've done here. This is the second verse. I've stripped the brass out and also I've stripped the drums down. So it's much more simplistic. Really nice contrast. Things are happening. We can understand. Higher power. Answer our call. Deliberately dropping the main beat out there just to lead into this. Okay, let me just do this now. Let's get back to the ministry in 1993 again. Main room business. Sometimes it's just amazing to hear musicality and vocals together without the drum beats. Okay, let's bring this back. Yeah, wow, what a song, right? It's just amazing. So um, let's talk about the mixing elements. And so um, let's just see what we've got going on here. Just trying to remember what I did. I do, I do stuff at speed. I mean, so you can see here that there's a variety of low cuts going on, some dips here in the mid and so on, um, and then the master chain here. So I think probably what's best um, to focus on is the master chain again. So... I'm doing some gentle bus compression using this Slate Digital VBC Grey, which is a SSL G-Series emulation. Then I've got the Softube Drama, uh, the S73, which I use for a bit of multi-band compression. It's quite subtle there. The Channel EQ, uh, a little bit of a dip at 1K, some roll off on some of the, the high frequencies. So there's, um, you can see here, 17.5K. Um, then I've got the Tape soft tube tape which i really love using type b which i tend to use most of the time um, a little bit of a boost on the highs here using that and then psi q which is a sound toys eq to warm up the bass you can see a boost there and then i've got the slate digital fresh air which is a fantastic tool for adding a, a extra high frequency dimension in a comfortable way and then finally my master limiter which is the slate fgx and um i'm going for an average i think it was about 10. um let's take a look let's play this and you can see so the rms so far the highest is minus nine i don't tend to like to go higher than that sometimes it might be about minus eight but certainly no higher than that That's it. That's a remix. Go and buy it. Go and support it. Amazing, um, you know, amazing song. And um, yeah, it's up on track source, like I said, in the software house chart, climbing and um, elsewhere, no doubt. So yeah, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I don't have tons of time to do this sort of thing, but if I can, I will respond and stay safe. <laughs>